There's not a lot of pressure. There's not a lot of pressure at all this year. It's just like, yeah, for me, it's just like a gift even getting in and getting a chance to run the race in the clockwise direction and seeing it in a new way, I think is like how I'm going into it this year. I didn't have a whole lot of time to think about it. It's not like I've been planning since the lottery in December. I, I was so far back, I just wrote it off. It's not gonna be a hard rock year. And it typically isn't for me in a, an even numbered year. And then all of a sudden just moved up. So, you know, what can I do? Just get in a couple runs and throw together some gear and take off into the mountains. What a lovely morning. It is great. Yeah, not too cold at all. Yeah, the jacket's gonna go away before we start. Oh, for sure. <coughs> It's always fun to be at the start of Hard Rock. There's obviously so many like old friends that are running it. There's so many friends cheering on and just they're out there to support. So like the race morning's kind of electric. Hey. 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 Jamil and I, we'd planned to run together and like we couldn't find each other at the start. Uh, <laughs> so I just jumped in and once the race started, I did what I normally do at Hard Rock, which is walk out of town. And sure enough, pretty soon he saw me as the only person walking and joined me. I was drawn sixth on the veteran men's wait list. And I believe there's 25 veteran spots. Either way, it's not a ton of spots considering being sixth on the wait list. So I figured it probably wouldn't move back to sixth. Like a lot of times people hold onto the slots, they're pretty coveted. There's always people that are ready and trained ahead of you. Three miles in here, climbing up Bear Creek Silverton. It's a beautiful morning out here. We've just busted out the poles and we're trying to play it smart. There wasn't a whole lot of movement until I think a month ago. I think I was still fifth. So it moved up one spot in six months. And all of a sudden it started moving and they had a service form that was due and some people moved up on some of the other lists. Just like slowly but surely, all of a sudden I was fourth and then third and then one day I checked and I was first. And I knew that my brother was coming off of an injury about a month ago, was in a boot. And I was thinking, well, that's gonna be my spot right there. So I started training some more. And as we got closer, I still wasn't in and he was looking like he was more likely to run. So I was just kind of sitting there waiting and then finally got the call a week and a half ago from Dale that he had a spot for me. Apparently Nick says it's eat time. So I gotta find something here. I think I'm gonna do some of these chews. Some strawberry cliff blocks. 
Okay, we're an hour 45 in. We are going to be climbing up that ridge. I might even spot a Killian up there at some point. We're 6.6 .6 miles in. The final traverse across before we climb up this ridge. Half the time we would just run races together start to finish. The other half the time we would be racing each other and one would go out faster, the other would pass them part way through, the first one would pass again, and then we'd both end up like exhausted 80% into the race and just finish the thing together. So like we have a long history of doing this, like we enjoy it, you know, we pace each other's races all the time. It just seems like both our fitness level, we should be going out at about the same pace. Whether we are planning on it or not, we've kind of realized like we're going to end up doing it because we're going out in the same shape. <laughs> All right, we're two and a half hours in at 12,200 feet. We've just got a little tiny bit more climbing until we have the downhill into KT-8 station. Actually feeling pretty good. We're taking it nice and easy. I'm not as prepared as I would like to be, but I would say I'm still, like I'm in a position where I know I can finish the race. Like I know I could even have a reasonable race. And sometimes you don't truly know what you have until you get out there. Been running, you know, Hard Rock since 09 or out here since even 2007. So, you know, I'm super familiar with the mountains and the trails and uh, I know my body pretty well. So I think, yeah, I think I can get around the mountains tomorrow and the next day. All right, coach's split had us in at three hours there and we were about 3.11, I think. Perfect, maybe. <laughs> Probably better to be, yeah, 11 minutes slow than too fast. As we climbed up towards Island Lake, we saw so many friends out on the trail cheering us on, so many familiar faces. I felt so good at that point. We've been up there so many times and there was quite a crowd that was gathered up on the ridge, so it was just, so awesome to see. Those are curries. What's up, boys? Some say it's the spiritual center of the Hard Rock 100 and the community at large. Apparently. Jeez. No, sir. <laughs> Just do trail work and a qualifier. Cheers so far. Just living the dream. Look at you guys. Enjoying it, man. Heading down from Grant Swamp Pass is one of the more gnarly descents on the course. I would say the only other one that can compare to it would be the descent from Virginia's Pass. This one is particularly fun. It is just this loose mountain of scree, so loose rocks. So you can really bomb down this as long as you just go with the flow of the rocks. Skipping down, I was having an absolute blast. came in quicker than Dylan was expecting, so he's out here chasing Nick down. Nick's just too dang fast. So far so good. Early on, but 20 miles down, so not too bad. I feel pretty good overall. Yeah, Nick and I have just been mostly together. He opened it up a little on that last downhill. At the six hour mark right now, and my heart rate's been high on this climb, so it's coming down a little bit here. I was like 165, probably pushing a little too hard right now, but I don't wanna lose Nick. There are very few places in the world like the San Juans, like even elsewhere in Colorado, uh, there's stuff similar, but I feel like nothing quite the same, where the density of mountains is just so extreme here, and like Silverton where it starts, this town exists because there's this little half mile by mile flat-ish area and then on every side it's just like mountains with mountains in between those with the mountains in between those in every direction there's mountains and you get to the top of any of them and you get this 360 degree view that's like pictures are amazing but the pictures like really don't do any justice to it it's like unfathomable to see it in person just the past 20 miles in six hours and we're going up Oscars right now. We can see the top. All 
I just topped out on Oscars. Six hours, 49 minutes in. Heading down towards Telluride. Nick has gone ahead of me a little bit. It's right up there. It's been running the downhills a little stronger. I want to hold back a little more. But he's only like a minute or so ahead. So we'll see. We might be some separation here. Feeling a little bit of a low energy point right now and on that climb. So we'll see how that pans out. It's inevitable to feel it at some point. Thanks for being out here. We're seven hours, nine minutes in and 23.8 miles. So right on target to hit Telluride around uh, seven hours, 40 minutes. Very close to Telluride aid station and just started raining here. Actually feels really refreshing. Nick is now quite a bit ahead. I've just let him go at this point. He is running way too hard for me. Good job. Hi. Oh, I love you so much. Thanks for being here. Can we keep going? The hard rock community likes to use the term true hard rocker for those that have finished the course in both the clockwise and counterclockwise direction. I first got into the race in 2009 and ran the counterclockwise direction. So I summited up and over Handy's Peak early in the race and then go through URA and Telluride. And turns out that was kind of the luck of the draw for me. So I went 2009, then 13, 2015, uh, 2017, and then 2021 was my fifth finish. So according to Hard Rock, I am not yet a true hard rocker uh, going into this year. So. We're in Telluride, it's a great day. <laughs> it's happening. It's like a quarter over, crazy. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Nick, he just like took off on the downhill and I was feeling a little like too much pounding. Yeah. So I just eased off, uh, which I think is good. I don't know how far ahead he is, but yeah. He's not far ahead. He just, yeah. uh, he's maybe just a few minutes ahead of you, but he didn't stop in the aid station at all. He, he just, just grabbed like his new pack stop. and that was it. Yeah. That's what he does. <laughs> so yeah, who knows what'll happen if I'll see him again. I may never see him again. I might see him in a little bit. Who knows? Well, I got ahead of Jamil on the downhill in the Telluride. Got through the aid station quick. So now I'm heading up to Kroger's Canteen. Hopefully he's not far behind. Picking up some rain here. It rained really hard for a couple minutes into Telluride. Now we got rain and a little bit of hail. Woo, this is pretty legit. Look at this. <laughs> it's coming down right now. Oh my gosh, the rain and the hail, I'm getting absolutely soaked. Woo! Getting tired, uh, 30 miles in and it's drying out, sun is out. That was a crazy storm. Higher up, there's a ton of hail everywhere on the ground. So the people above me got hit pretty hard. Bunch of thunder and lightning. It's kind of moved on for the time being, but you never know. Jamil fell back coming into Telluride on the downhill and then I think I got out a lot quicker than him so he's somewhere back behind climbing heading up to Kroger's Canteen right back behind me you know this race is so beautiful it's so tough it has all the right things it's old school it has people that devote their whole year to volunteering for this race and like pouring their heart and soul and when that happens and you have 
just the feeling of, of being out there, just speaking from experience, you know, of running through these mountains, even if you've never run the hard rock, like it's, it's an insane experience just to run up across these mountain ranges and do epic long days in the San Juans and to tie it all together and to run through these towns is unique in the sport, I think anywhere. And you see it even with guys like Killian. I mean, Killian is drawn to this race because it's, it's like anti the European scene. It's anti the UTMB scene. It's different. It's it doesn't even call itself a race. It's just a run. They say it's, it's the Hard Rock 100 Endurance Run. Pretty close to 13,000 feet here. So beautiful. And Virginia's pass is right up here. What's up, Joe? Thanks, man. I gotta ask, how's my brother doing? Uh, he's good. He's way ahead. He's like probably an hour and a half at least. No way. Out of Telluride, like, you know, it's a real steep climb up to uh, Kroger's and it was just blazing and it's steep and then a storm blew in. Uh, I just got uh, caught up to Maggie and Darcy and we just got hammered with like rain and hail. We're like trying to huddle under a tree to get our rain jackets on and it just blasted us for, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. And then like a lot of the weather around here, as soon as it came, it was gone. And then it was just hot and humid again. <laughs> Wait, yeah, I'll take is it. that enough? Yeah. <laughs> I'll chase it with a good old fashioned water. Uh, Thanks for being up here. Yeah. How did the, you guys hit any weather? We yeah, got like, past it, really. Like, it sounds like you guys got yeah. more, yeah, more work than we did. So yeah, we were quite Woo, up Water. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Put a paintbrush. Good work. First one to do it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we can. Uh, keep Whatever. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. hoping just all that breaking on the downhill is intense so loose right now I wish it had rained a little update at mile 34.66 I just passed the governor basin old aid station location and I was one minute under target time that's great I thought I was gonna be quite a bit behind so I just need to run 10 minute miles downhill on Campbird Road to hit your A at 11.55 uh, elapsed time. So uh, Nick is at this point long gone. I don't know what he's thinking or doing because we we're supposed to kind of be on the same pace that I'm running, at least through your A, maybe, be, maybe further. So either he's just feeling really good or might come back to bite him. No, you're full there. Uh, what can I get you for food? 213. 213, thank you. Some sort of real food. We yeah. have rice balls. That's vegan. Vegan, potatoes. we got vegan, gluten free. There's vegan soup. Potatoes. soup. Let's try one of these. Yeah, let me get it out. PB&J. Yep, we have thank veggies. You. Just about 40 miles in here in 1128. Trying to time it so that I hit your A at 1155, so that'd be Whew, what, 27 minutes from now? I think I have three miles to go. And you can see I'm walking right here. Anytime it's flat, basically flat, or slightly up, I'm walking. You can see the guys ahead of me, they're just jogging, but I'm walking. I just scared about my fitness this year and 
I don't want to suffer later too, ma too badly because there will be suffering. You know there will be suffering. Hard rock is hard for a reason. This is one of the coolest parts of the whole course. And watch your head. Buddy. Yo! <laughs> Isn't this fun? I'm still having fun. Yeah, Jamil, I kind of lost him going down into Telluride. I think you got two miles on him. Yeah, he, I think he's, I don't think he's doing bad. I think I just sped up a bit. <laughs> so, so far so good. We'll see if I pay for this later, but I think I'm right where I want to be. Yeah, your downhills look super strong, dude. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling stuff like quads or they have some achiness, but seems like as long as I'm not pushing hard, they're fine. Yeah, that whole road felt good. Six. No, I'm good. I got to put a burrito in there. He's got a burrito. No, nothing else. Thank you. Cool. I've got all this crap in there. You're good to go. You're good, plenty of gloves, got your stuff in case it rains. All right, Nick. All right, let's go. Yeah. This way. Good job. Looks like maybe two hours of sprinkles or yeah. maybe rain. I got downpoured going out of Telluride. <laughs> it like smashed. Woo! Smashed me and like Maggie and Darcy for like. 15 minutes, 20 minutes straight, just absolutely annihilated us. And then it went away. And then it was hot again. <laughs> How are you feeling going into the night? About as good as I could hope. Like, it's tough to tell. Like, I can definitely feel my lack of fitness, but I can also feel that I have a ton of base. <laughs> so I think it'll make up for it. That's one of those things, like, either it's gonna go well or it's not, and I won't know until that happens. I think I'll know past handies if this is a really good race or not such a good race. So far, I can't complain getting this far, feeling this good. Get it, baby. <laughs> Look who I found, Maggie. How's Hard Rock? Good. I did a lot of training and maybe you not so much. Yeah. And here we are. Here we are, whatever. Yeah. I got into the sport with my two younger brothers. We all ran our first ultra marathon together at the same exact race. And so that's like, we're always gonna have that. And anytime I get to line up and, and start a race that they're a part of, it's, it's always gonna be something special and kind of bring us back to, to those days a little bit. When I got into the race in 2009, that year, the course was run in the counterclockwise direction, and I never gave it much thought. I thought, yeah, at some point soon, I'm gonna get a chance to run this race in the clockwise direction. And year after year, my name would not get pulled on even numbered years, so I would instead pace friends, I would pace Nick, film the race. As the years rolled on, uh, I kept getting in in odd numbered years. Not only is it steep and, and rocky and all that, but then it's it's at altitude and it's so high up. So it's just another factor. You excited? Super excited. 24 hours ago when I was asked to pace, I was not excited <laughs> as I've never done it, but I'm, I'm doing it. I'm stoked. There's some really loud thunder and a lot of lightning. So we got that going for us. All right, rainstorm number two is upon us and it's dumping buckets. And there will be low moments and you will be tired. You're gonna be breathing hard, going up to 13,000 and then 14,000 feet above sea level. There's gonna be energy swings and all kinds of things out there. That's, what, that's why we do 100 milers. All right, we're crossing the 550 right now. You can see the road right down there. <laughs> and once you've done a few hundreds or uh, a couple hundreds, it's like 
you want to find one that that's tougher maybe and it can challenge you keep you keep you moving up all right bear creek trail this is classic hard rock right here massive drop-offs just past the engineer aid station and now we've got this to look at heading up to engineer pass five miles down to animus then heading over Andy, handies in the night still moving well <laughs> getting close to the halfway mark here still got daylight the last little bit up on the highest of the peaks you can see we're probably within a half hour of the engineer aid station which i'm hoping to hit by 9 p.m which is a half hour from now josh is feeling good i'm feeling good i just learned we're ahead of the second place woman now we passed maggie and darcy back there so just courtney's ahead i don't know what place i'm in but i don't care <laughs> to be honest oh that's deep <laughs> welcome to hard rock you've oh, been christened it's about time <laughs> So they told me Nick is an hour ahead. <laughs> Crazy guy. He's got fitness, man. And his injury must be healed. All right, thanks guys. Thanks so much. Nice job, guys. Early in my career, the night is awful. Like the first time I did Hard Rock, it was the lowest point easily. I like my feet froze for six hours. I couldn't feel them pace slows, you have to look at a headlamp and the little tunnel vision you get from that. But recently, the better I've gotten, like I look forward to the night more than the day because that's where I'm passing people, that's where I'm coming alive, I get to start pushing. And this year I didn't know what to expect. Woo! Engineer. I'm totally gonna sit here for like two seconds. <sighs> oh, yes. Man, we just topped out at almost 13,000. Faintest amount of light left. Astronomical toilet. Feel tired. But we're over halfway. It's hard to breathe up here. I guess we should get lower. What does the forecast look like? Is it all clear? It's looking like it's clear now. How cold is it? It hasn't been that cold. Okay. It's been. All right, gonna make some. Gonna make some risky clothing decisions then. Uh, Going singlet and nothing else. No. No jacket. No gloves. Just run. run <laughs> Woo! All right. Nice job. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. Right. Hello. I'm checking out, I'm good. You're checking out? Yep. Do you have a picture? Yes. All right, where's my stuff? Right. Nice work. Good job, Nick. Hi, Nick. Oh, hi, Nick. Hey, Nick Curry. Yeah. Do you have any requests from the aid station, Nick Curry? Hi. Nope. That's nope. Nancy. Uh, okay. Where's my stuff? That's all. Okay. Right here. Okay. Right There's a chair right there. Do you need something from the aid station? No, not Box. if you have the burrito. Yeah. I have, yeah, I'll, I'll, I have a burrito. should be a burrito in there. Yeah, uh, I want. I did. I packed a special burrito. <laughs> How's your wife? So you put some in there already? Uh, no. You need some? Maybe. Maybe not. Oh, the wife. It's gonna be too late. I'm gonna be gone. Excited. Let's do it. Ready? Okay. Hell yeah, dude. Here. Hat. There we go. Good job, Nick. Nice job. Good job, runner. Good job. See you, buddy. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, man. Stoked Pleasure to night. have you all night. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's special because it's so hard. And I don't know, maybe I, in my head, I minimize it because I've 
you know, been able to complete it five times and kind of used to the mountain terrain. I've been able to spend so much time up here, but I mean, you're talking 33 to 34,000 feet of climbing. It is just constantly up and down. It is relentless out there. It is remote and some sections are kind of cross country. It's typically more minimally marked. There's just a lot of factors involved in it, you know? And while they have a lot of aid stations out there, the terrain is so tough that it's hours between aid stations, even though they have, I think, 15 of them. Thank you. <laughs> there were a few times through the night when I was thinking about Nick, where on course he might be. I didn't really have much beta on it. Considering I didn't see him anywhere on course, I figured he was doing pretty well. He had a pretty strong race considering what he was up against going into the race. Having an Achilles injury, having to get PRP therapy five or six weeks before the race and being in a boot to be able to move up in the field as much as he did, to start out where he was with me and, and to come in in the 30 hour range is, uh, is pretty special for him. About three in the morning, we're coming into Burroughs. We are here at Burroughs Park. It's three something in the morning. Here is my amazing meal of vegan pod stickers. We got John Kelly right over here. Almost five o'clock, 70 miles in. Uh, we just heard that Killian beat Francois by 15 minutes. And I uh, got some uh, hash browns and avocados and cold brew coffee and it's sitting by this fire for just a few minutes not gonna stay long uh, and John Kelly got up and he's here and you might see him on the trail because we're gonna head out Good morning we're heading up towards Pole Creek section been super tired especially the last hour as the sun's coming up we're not doing terrible we're not doing great <laughs> But my back has been hurting for like as long as I can remember with this pack on. So it seems to be getting worse. How you feeling, man? Uh, I feel better. <laughs> I, I felt worse. I feel fine. <laughs> Legs don't have pep though. Yeah. That's so, okay. You're like, nearly I'm, there. I'm, I'm climbing that fine. Great. That I'm great. not bombing downhills anymore. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, but I'm moving. Yeah. No, no issues. <laughs> nice. Like no big issues. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking overnight. <laughs> yeah. Actually, like, I had this crazy, like, burst of something from 60 to 80. I, like, destroyed handies. And then <laughs> all the way up uh, Cataract Gulch and, like, halfway through Pole Creek. There's no one behind me that should be able to catch me. So I can just have fun. You know, as good as I felt, as much as I do have base fitness unexpectedly, I still don't have that much training. Around 80, I realized, like, I don't need to destroy myself. The, the whole goal of this is to come through this healthy. Then I started thinking back to the balance of, I don't need to like push myself into the ground here. That isn't the goal. I've already had a great race and I want to enjoy the rest. Ready? Ready. Yeah, yeah, good good luck, yeah. where, where are we out? Right here, right this way. Yeah, buddy. Okay, 2634 into this thing. We're finally moving a little bit better again. And we just spotted the new Pole Creek Aid Pole Station. You can see it right down there. We spent all that time trying to stay dry. Now we gotta get wet. Uh, <laughs> all right, just get up to Maggie Pole Pass. 
28.30 into the run. Anthony's a ways back. All right, I can see the second to last aid station, Maggie Gulch, right down there. Thank you. All right, Anthony's calling it. Yeah, I unfortunately, the health shit I've been dealing with the past couple years here is flaring up right now, so I'm pretty dizzy and I don't want to slow jam down, so he knows his way. Well, thank you for joining me. That was a that was a stretch. We did yeah. good. Oh man, it was great. Great to be out. You kept me motivated. So. All right, man. All right, man. Well, good luck. And, Sounds uh, good. Uh, All right, I'll try and get it done as soon as I can. All right, a little check in. I'm probably 11 or 12 miles from the finish now. Coming down Green Mountain. Just over 30 hours in right now. So probably be 33 something. Perfectly fine with me. Let's go! Yeah, the hour. Yeah. Yeah. Coming in. Unless there's other things that I want to do, I would do this race every year if I could, uh, because it's just it's it's something else. Yeah. <laughs> At 11,200 feet, we could get up to 13,000. Divey's little giant. Race time is 31.30. And I'm tired. But I got Gary here pacing me. And he's setting a good pace up here. So hopefully we're done before too long. crossing. It's about three miles from there to the rock. My IT band blew up in the last oh 10 or 15 miles so I'm having to baby it a bit. Kind of limping sideways. <laughs> but I think we're making good time still. As I hit the streets of Silverton, the pain mostly went away. I just focused on running every step all the way to that rock. It's been a culmination of a lot of years, uh, a lot of years of coming out to this race, of towing the line, of being part of this experience, and it was a bittersweet moment for me to finally finish this course in both directions, to be able to call myself a true hard rocker. It's been a long time coming and something that I know I'm always going to cherish. Hey, look who's here, it's Jam Jam! <laughs> <laughs>